Tunçay Taymaz, who is a professor of geophysics and seismology at Istanbul Technical University. Tunçay, also a member of Turkey's National Earthquake Advisory Board. Tunçay, thank you so much uh, for coming in. Look, obviously, monitoring and response are two separate things. Let's look at response. How do you evaluate the response at the uh, moment? So far, I'm quite happy with the search and rescue operations run by central government and the local administration and governorships and mayor and NGOs. It's all underway. And since 1999, Kojeli and earthquakes, we had a, achieved enormous amount of uh, you know, efforts and success in, inside Turkey and also international uh, disaster management. So I'm quite happy with the efforts so far. But on the East Anatolian fault zone, we have risks or seismic gaps still existing uh, along the North Anato uh, East Anatolian fault towards uh, Karlova, Palu, Pötürge, are each of them still capable of uh, generating about 6.8 Richter magnitude scale earthquake. So danger is still there. We had the major aftershock 5.2 yesterday, and still there is more to come, and aftershock activities will certainly continues for another three to six months. And the danger is there, as you said, an Arabian, Eurasian, uh, Anatolian plates, and along with the African plates is, you know, diverging against each other, creating major earthquakes. Now, of course, it's not as mega thrust earthquakes like in Sumatra, China, and Japan, or Vancouver, or Chilean subduction zones, but we are quite experienced with earthquake management, and so far I'm happy with the progress. Uh how has Turkey's building regulations progressed over the decades? Where do they stand now in terms of how much a 6.8 magnitude earthquake would normally damage infrastructure? What do you see about what's happened here in the east in terms of how buildings are constructed? As far as the earthquake engineering and earthquake resistant building codes are concerned, we are ahead of maybe uh, San Francisco codes in the US or in some parts of Japan, but the human factor of you know, workers, laymen, construction companies, honesty matters in most of the cases are a bit corrupted, I'm afraid. And that's the, the most dangerous point that I can think of it, still underway. And this was an easy escape for the 6.8 magnitude earthquake. I was expecting even more damage, mm. disaster, human life loss or economical losses. But the center or hypercenter was away from the uh, major cities, towns, and in, in the, some of these highlands, away from the highly populated area. So if it was in a, a densely populated area, we would have had bigger uh, damage and had loss and, and search and rescue operation would be even worse. But uh, still more to learn from aftershock studies, field survey, mapping from geomorphological, neotectonic, seismotectonic, geodynamic, uh, or tomographic methods, and the certain central government, especially Turkish Science and Technology Council, Academy of Sciences, National Advisory Board of Earthquake Research Council, that needs to invest uh, on big projects in an uh, intellectual way, like we have in Japan or US or Europe. We are still behind on those scientific supports. Uh, the figures from the year 2019 are amazing. Turkey has more than 1,100 earthquake monitoring stations yes. around the country. They registered more than 23,000 earthquakes yeah. in the year 2019. Yeah. I understand that it's not possible to predict the specific yeah, yeah. timing of one earthquake, yeah. but when you look at the trend, yeah. many people here in the yeah. biggest city in the country, Istanbul, yeah are wondering whether there is a big one coming to this city. Are there any indications of where a big one may hit? Yeah, excellent uh, question. We know where and whereabout of the geometry of the earthquakes will eventually occur in the future based on our knowledge on last hundred years along the North Anatolian Fault or any other major faults. But we know exactly uh, more or less locations, mechanism, I strike, dip, rake, slip vectors, instantaneous velocities, uh, deformation, displacement, maximum average, seismic moment release, and not the timing. We may forecast things, but not predict things. So mm. we are forecasting, uh, like weather forecasts, but it's difficult. It's not like meteorological uh, forecasting of rain or snow, uh, but there are progress or good examples in China, Japan, and US, but we are getting there, and every earthquake is producing very variable data sets for intellectual seismology or scientific studies, but in the field, in the earthquake-prone areas, a public or layman in the street mm. needs an helping 
hand rescue operation, food and shelter, and plan the future of their life in the near future or beyond. So that's uh, a bit conflict of interest, and there is a controversy over there, but we, do, we are happy that our search and rescue operations and emergency management having a, an exercise, in a way, uh, to you know, develop their next action, if any, well, I hope not, uh, future earthquakes, not necessarily earthquakes, but uh, landsliding and, and other forest fires like in Australia we, we are having, or even in mm. the Aegean, Marmara Coast and, and Black Sea, we do have tsunami risks, and they are all byproducts of the major earthquakes. Tunshai Thaimaz, really appreciate your taking time on a Sunday to come into our studio here at TRT World. Thanks very much. Thanks indeed. for having me.